Well, good morning again, everybody. How we going? How we doing? All right, I'm doing another video. Bunch on books. Here's a bunch of stuff on books. So, of course, here's my favorite question to ask you guys: What's the best thing with you lately? Right? <laughs> Why do I ask that question? By the way. The answer to that question, I would love to see it in the comments. Go ahead and throw that in the comments. That would be fantastic. Uh, but I love to know what's going on best in your lives. It could be this morning. It could have been this week so far. It could be any of the above. But why do I ask that question? Because the key to a happy heart is a thankful heart. And we're going to get into a little bit more why I asked that question here a little bit later on. Uh, but the, sh the book that I read this morning, and yes, I read an entire book this morning, uh, again, the great app, and I don't get any kind of, and this is not sponsored by Blinkist or anything like that. It's just a really great app I love to use. I actually had an idea for something like this, like over 10 years ago, they just beat me to the punch and they created it. But the app is called Blinkist. It makes it so I can read and or listen to a book in 15 minutes or less. Uh, it's fantastic. I love it and I use it every day. Sean Acor's um, The Happiness Advantage fantastic, fantastic book. And this is the claim that he makes, is that people that are happy tend to be more successful, tend to go further in life, both in their job, in their relationships, just in life in general, more than those who are not happy. There's a couple things he draws points to in his book. Uh, number one is, you know what, and here's some practical things that you can do that he draws out. Like he builds an entire case study for it, and I'll bring some of that in here in a second, but basically he gives a couple tips, and I'm going to give you a couple tips on this whole thing of happiness, and, and, and this is kind of the premise behind all that. Happiness isn't so much what's happening to you. Happiness is your viewpoint. Um, happiness is really a choice. Now, some of you are going to think, no, it's not. It's not a choice. I mean, this happened to me. This happened to me. This happened to me. How can I be happy? We're going to get into that. Um, so, but here's some practical things that you can do, and I love these things. Number one, write down a few things that you're thankful for. That's a great morning ritual. That's a great way to start your day, is write down things that you're thankful for. Um, there's science behind that. Also, there's really good science behind this as well. That or think of something you're looking forward to. Maybe you've got a vacation coming up. Maybe you're looking forward to see someone you haven't seen in a long time, or you've got something coming in the mail that you ordered that's coming, and you're really excited about it. Um, think on those little things. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be a little thing. And when you think on things like that, it actually raises your endorphin levels by 27%. But those are things that you can do to, you know, increase happiness. Another thing, and this is a principle that I think it's good for all of us to know, is that your brain, in a good way, is limited. Um, most, most women might say that about guys, but I mean, all of us, <laughs> all of our brains are a little bit limited. And this is what I mean by that. You can only effectively focus and feel one thing at a time. Uh, you know, and there's, there's lots of studies. I mean, it's, it's really hard to be raging mad and laughing hysterically at the same time. It's virtually impossible. It's really hard to be sad and to be thankful at the exact same time. Virtually impossible. And we're wired that way for a reason. Um, there was a really cool study done in 1979. They took a group of 75-year-olds. I think there's about over 20 of them. And so this was 1979. These, these gentlemen, uh, men and women, were 75 years old. And they put them into an environment that was completely looked like, felt like, smelt like, completely immersive of the 50s, 20 years prior. So they basically got time traveled into the past as far as they're concerned. Um, I mean, they knew the experiment was happening, but they were immersed in that for a period of time. And then they did studies with these 79-year-old uh, men and women. And both mentally, physically, um, and many other types of tests, they performed like their 20-year-old younger selves. So when you're in environments, I mean, that's a really important part of happiness. When you are surrounded by people and things 
that are positive, it's also going to make you happy. And also, this is another thing he talks about in the book that I think is hilarious and really cool. It's called the Tetris Effect. Uh, when, okay, so they basically took a study of people. Um, I think it was around 50 people, if I'm remembering right. If I'm wrong, read the book. You'll, you'll know the exact amount. But they took a group of people, and they had them play Tetris for like days. Like it was ridiculous amount. And what they found is that many of the people that they followed weeks thereafter, like when they would go shopping, they would take cereal boxes and they would straighten them in the aisles. Like they just, they were wired to fix things. And that is something called the Tetris effect. Now, the reason that that's important is that we are wired in such a way that we usually follow habits. We follow uh, structures, you know, where we get into these, either these ruts or these rhythms, however you want to put it, of, you know, these things that we do over and over and over again. So as an example, I'm not picking on any industry here, but let's say, um, you know, an accountant and let's say one of their jobs within an office is to find all of the corrections, all of the problems with what they're looking at. If people are habitually looking for problems, looking for problems, looking for problems all day at work, those people have a tendency to um, find the problems in life. Now, the inverse is also true. Instantly looking for, and I'm sorry about the interruptions with the feed, guys. That's weird. I've never had that problem here, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but when, when you look for the positives and the positives and the positives, positives you'll look for positives in life. Um, it's very, very powerful. So just a couple things. Um, you know, and, and this is how it really breaks down for me and my family and how we've kind of used it. So again, I'm going to bring up my son, Evan. And, and here's the thing. For, you, for those, those of you that don't know, um, Evan actually had, for the longest time, speech challenges. Okay, uh, My daughter, Aubrey, who's four, she also has speech challenges. She's in some special classes to help her with that. Uh, Grace, she's too young. She's like not even two yet, so we're not sure. Uh, but the reason I don't use necessarily Aubrey or Grace in my examples is because there's not as much... Uh, communication yet so as their communication evolves they will become more of my examples and stories okay I don't want anybody out there thinking well why does Bob only talk about his son it's not that I love my son any more than my daughters um, it just has to do with where they're at in life okay so but with Evan um, sometimes he'll get sad he's a very emotional little guy and I think that's a great gift that he's been given because many especially men don't engage in emotions um, a great guy that if you don't know who he is, and I'll be tagging him in this video, is Tony Fonte. He helps men get through grief and shame and become the men they were destined to be. So huge shout out to Tony Fonte. Um, he is a master at that. He actually just released a book that talks about that in his own story. This is extremely powerful. So Evan is you know, an emotional little guy. And when he gets disappointed, he thinks he has let us down. He gets extremely sad, um, cries, gets you know pouty and, and stuff. Now, um, I have, again, two choices. Two choices. Um, either one, I can just tell him, dude, fix your attitude now. And I will tell you, I have done that in the past. And that did not work good. That's not, in the, And I didn't understand these principles when I did that. Now they're really helping me. So, no, I don't just tell him to fix his attitude because that doesn't do anything. To get out of that rut when he's in it. And I think we can all identify with that. Have you ever felt just like depressed? Things are not going your way. You just wanted to stay home, sit on the couch, eat like a tub of ice cream, watch TV. You don't want to be around people, you know, whatever. You just kind of want to isolate. That, that's what I'm talking about. I think all of us kind of identify with this to some degree. So then this is what I'll ask him because, um, and I'll take him through these series of, of questions and he knows what the questions are, but they're still helpful for him. And he's learning these things even at a young age. He's only eight years old. And I'll ask him, Evan, should we be sad? And there, guys, there's nothing wrong with being sad. There's a time and place for everything, but to stay sad or to be overly emotionally negative in a negative state when it's not needed 
and you don't know how to get out of it, that I don't believe is good. Okay, so I'm teaching him how to get to a, a better state. So I'll say, Evan, should we be sad or should we choose to be happy? And he'll say, <laughs> happy, right? And I'll say, okay, Evan, how do we be happy? And this is what he'll tell me. <laughs> be thankful. Exactly, buddy. So what are you thankful for? And then he'll start talking about what he's thankful for. Now, I did not have to teach him this. This is Evan because he's relational. Uh, but the first time I asked him that, he said, well, I'm thankful for you. And I'm thankful for mom and Aubrey and baby Grace and Nana and Pop and grandma and grandpa and you know Jack and Henry and Clark and you know Wesley and and Brooke and Courtney and Uncle Eric and Uncle Christy and Uncle Dave and Uncle Charity and, and he he starts talking about all these people and and you know then his toys that he loves and things and you can literally see his state change from sad to happy. Now what was it? What changed? He was thankful. He started focusing on the thing and it changed his state. And that is such a valuable tool because all of us go through things in life that are hard, that are challenging. And how can I be happy when just life sucks right now? Well, this is how you can do it. Choose to be thankful. Uh, we can choose to be thankful. We can choose gratitude. Well, I got nothing to be thankful about for, Bob. Everything's going, uh, everything sucks right now. Well... You know, odds are if you're on a computer, an iPad, some kind of tablet or something, um, you've got an iPhone, a computer, a tablet or something. There's a lot of people that don't have that. Odds are, most likely, you're, you know, watching this in an air-conditioned type of environment. You have a roof over your head. Um, you know, even if you're outside, you probably have access to a roof over your head. There's probably not a whole lot of homeless people watching this. There might be a few, and hey, you know what? There's even things for you to be thankful for. I'm gonna tell you about a guy who actually was in that situation that has influenced a lot of my life and this exact topic. But hey, you got a roof over your head. That's something to be thankful for. There's people that don't have that. Hey, you got running water? Do you have indoor plumbing? Those are things to be thankful for. And here, here's the thing that you can draw from that. There's all kinds of things going on in our lives that we take for granted. All kinds of things that we take, take for granted. But the best way for you to change your state is to be thankful and find the things that you take for granted. Um, is to thank people that don't get thanked very often. Um, trash man comes by. Many times I'll go out and I'll actually say to them, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. If you were not here doing what you do, this neighborhood would really stink, literally. I go to the grocery store and I'll get a cart and I'll see those those, those men and women that are taking the carts from the parking lot into the grocery store. And I'll thank them and I'll say, hey, thank you for what you do. Um, if I had to go outside, especially when it's raining or extremely hot like you do, and all of us had to do that, it would be absolute chaos. Thank you for making it so that we can easily get these. Now here's the thing, those are just two examples, but those two examples I think are really good because those people do not typically get thanked for what they do. And you would not believe how their whole countenance just changes. It completely changes. And it changes their day. So a couple things that I might recommend that you might do. Number one is start your day with thankfulness. Start it with thankfulness. Write down three things that you're thankful for. That's a great um, exercise that they have in there. Number two, smile. It actually changes your state when you smile. And smiling is a lot like yawning. Like if I yawn, if I do that, and it's sincere, I force that, but if it was sincere, many people, regardless of where they are, 
even if they can't see me, only hearing me yawn, you know what a lot of people do? They yawn. It's contagious. Smiling, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. It's contagious. Um, then also just one more resource that people have made through history that typically get them results that they're looking for, achieve success in all different areas of life. Uh, decisions is today I will choose to be happy. And he really dives into this topic of thankfulness leading to happiness. Also, definitely check out Sean Acor's book on the happiness advantage. Fantastic book. So guys, I'm sorry about the interruptions. I'll work on my internet connection and what's going on so next time we won't have as many interruptions. But if you guys could leave me a couple comments. Number one, what's the best thing going on in your life? Why do I ask that question? And that's a question you can steal and ask people because instead of asking people, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Well, hey, I'm doing sucky right now. Life stinks. Well, you know, that, that, I'm sorry. <laughs> or, hey, everything's doing great. But when you ask someone, hey, what's the best thing going on in your life lately? It, it leads people, and that actually helps people. So tell me, what's the thing that you're thankful for today? What's the best thing going on in your life lately? Also, what are things that help you be happy? What are some of those? Share this video if you think it will be helpful to someone. Because um, you know what? I think if the world engaged in more gratitude and thankfulness, this world would be a better place. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video.